Okay, thank you very much. And how do you do, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? My name is Jeff Weiner, and welcome to my YouTube channel, which is entitled Polo Neck Music. Okay, now, as I said before, my name is Jeff Weiner, and I come from Melbourne, Australia. I must confess that my motivation for creating a YouTube channel is mainly for the purpose of shameless self-promotion, but I also like to think that I've had a reasonable amount of experience as a performing musician, and I'd like to share some of my so-called expertise, or lack of it, with all of you out there in cyberspace. Please note that this is not a teaching channel. There are plenty of fantastic resources for musical instrumental tuition out there on YouTube and elsewhere on the internet. My goal is simply the creation of a performance-based channel. Now I am primarily a guitarist who also dabbles with keyboards. At one stage of my life I even took up the cello for all my sins and was able to reach a standard on this instrument whereby I could perform with amateur chamber music groups and symphony orchestras. Here are some pictures of me taken many years ago with my cello. I've lost a bit of hair since then, but on the other side of the coin, I've lost a few kilos as well, and that can't be a bad thing. Unfortunately, I had to stop playing the cello several years ago for personal reasons, which I can't talk about here. Anyway, on this channel, I would like to present an eclectic variety of guitar music. Some of these genres will include acoustic folk music, bit of jazz. Some fancy country picking. And of course a bit of hard rock and stuff as well. What I'd like to do now is show you my collection of instruments. Here we have what is known as a Maton Barossa model acoustic guitar. It has a beautiful tone and also consists of unique snowflake inlays on the fretboard. Maton guitars are manufactured right here in my hometown and I think they are of world class quality. They can easily compare to any other top of the range acoustic guitar which is produced elsewhere in the world. 
When I was looking around for an acoustic, I definitely wanted something in the Maton range. Aside from the obvious superior quality of this instrument, I knew that through buying Australian, I would be doing my bit for the local economy. Okay, now this is an Epiphone Birdland semi-acoustic guitar. It is a copy of the Gibson Birdland, but retails at a fraction of the price. Aside from the huge price difference between the Gibson and Epiphone versions of this guitar, I think that the quality of both instruments is very similar. Therefore, I believe that I got very good value for money through the purchase of the Epiphone model. Not only that, this instrument sounds as good as it looks. Sometimes I just love to sit down and marvel at the gorgeous blonde finish and the beautiful gold inlays. I can't say that this is a versatile guitar, however it is perfect for getting that sweet, mellow jazz sound. Now we move right along to a classic 1957 reissue Fender Stratocaster. There is so much information on the Stratocaster out there which I can't add much more to. There have been countless guitarists throughout the world that have been playing this instrument for the last 60 years and to this day it still remains a design classic. Out of all my guitars, this is definitely the one I play the most. It has an amazingly wide tonal range and can be used for many different musical genres. You'll notice that I decided to stick a few decals of some of my favourite cartoon characters on the scratch plate. A couple of them have faded over time, but these decorations illustrate the fact that I love watching cartoons in my spare time, especially the classic Warner Brothers, Disney and MGM cartoons that were produced during the 1930s, 40s and 50s. Last but not least, here is my Gibson SG. I had dreamed of owning an SG for the longest time and finally acquired one several years ago. So this is a stock standard SG with a cherry finish. It's my favourite Gibson SG colour and I wouldn't dream of having anything else. The SG is perfect for playing blues, hard rock and heavy metal. The humbucking pickups provide excellent sustain for single note solos as well as an impressive fat sound for chord passages. And now for a look at my amplifiers. This fawn coloured Fender Hot Rod Deluxe amp is a mainstay in my collection. This is the main amp that I'm using at the moment. It's a 40 watt valve combo and it really pumps out the sound in both a live and studio environment. The amplifier delivers a very natural clean sound with adjustable reverb. It also contains an overdrive channel with adjustable distortion levels. And this is a Trace Elliott Super Tramp Twin Stereo Quad Chorus. A bit of a mouthful, but that's what it's called. Anyway, Trace Elliott originally established their reputation for manufacturing high quality bass amplifiers, but they made lead guitar amps as well. And this is one of them. It's a 130 watt solid state model which also consists of a valve preamp. It delivers a clean sound at a high volume without distorting. I've owned this amp for a number of years, but haven't used it recently. It still works very well though, and is especially suitable for larger venues and outdoor festivals. And here is a Fender 20 Watt Mustang 1 amplifier which I mainly use for practicing at home. The sound is reasonable and contains a number of variable presets. I purchased this item in a shop recently and the salesperson tried to talk me out of buying it, but I followed my gut instinct and snapped it up. To this day, I do not regret my decision. Hey, you want to know something? I almost forgot. Silly me. As an added bonus, I'd like to show you a couple of extra guitars which I don't really play much anymore, but I still like to keep them as part of my collection. Here they are. So the one on the left is a Brazilian Jose Perez classical nylon string guitar. In years gone by, I made a fairly intense study of classical guitar playing and used this instrument to develop my technique. The guitar on the right is a Fender Lead 2. This was one of the cheaper guitars in the Fender range, but they discontinued making it back in 1982. However, it plays well and has a great sound. It has taken me through many live gigs in the distant past, as well as a couple of recording sessions. It was also Bono's main guitar during the early days of U2. Now let's move on. Sometimes I like to have a tinkle on the piano. Further down the track, I may include a few piano solo pieces on this channel as well. Aside from being a musician, throughout the course of my miserable life, I have also developed abilities as a visual artist. 
Over the last 12 years, I have become passionate about airbrushing. Here are a few examples of my airbrushed artwork. I am planning to get into the field of digital illustration soon and may include future samples of my artwork as it develops. I may also introduce a bit of levity later on. Some of us like to consider ourselves to be closet stand-up comedians and together with some of the reprobates that I choose to associate with, we might be able to add some humour as well. So there you have it folks, the first introductory video on my Polo Nick Music YouTube channel. New video presentations will be going up once every two weeks, so please stay tuned. As time goes on, I will also try to engage some musician friends to perform with me in various group situations. I look forward to catching up with you all again very soon, and have a great day. Cheers. Bye. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, then please click on the subscribe button. You may also feel free to post comments as well. If you have any questions, then I will try my best to answer them. Thank you all very much for your attention.